Hello, and welcome to the first of three videos covering Chapter 4 of Government in America. Uh, this chapter covers civil liberties and their connection with public policy. Uh, civil liberties are the term that we use for the protections that we have uh, from our government interfering uh, with us. So uh, making sure that we have the right to speak and act freely uh, is part of what our civil liberties are. And uh, the Constitution, especially once we had the Bill of Rights, uh, put a lot of civil liberties into the Constitution and made sure that they would be protected, which usually is something that Americans like, although, as we'll discuss, when it comes time to actually see the consequences of uh, people's civil liberties being respected, there are times where lots of the American public is less uh, favorable uh, about civil liberties because uh, they want the government to do something or they want the government to interfere with a certain group of people and because of civil liberties protections, they can't. So we'll be talking about those as we go. Now, uh, as I was saying, in our Constitution, we see a lot of the civil liberties and their protections coming from the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights are the first ten amendments that were added to the Constitution, and they were added very early on. Uh, it was one of the things that some of the states who didn't like the draft of the Constitution as it was originally written, they said, okay, we can get behind a lot of this, but we really need it set down on paper what are the rights of the people, and let's guarantee that the government is not going to mess with those rights. So the Federalists and the people that supported the new Constitution said, okay, we can deal with that, we can add those, we'll amend the Constitution after it's ratified. And so we got the Bill of Rights. Now, originally, and if you look at the text of the, uh, the Bill of Rights, they only applied to the federal government. A lot of the states had their own bills of rights in their own state constitutions, but there wasn't a guarantee that all of the states had to follow exactly what the uh, uh, the Constitution said. Um, and that matters, as we'll see later on. But uh, over time, the Supreme Court in particular has used various decisions to say, okay, the states have to follow most, but not necessarily all, of the Bill of Rights. Uh, so the states have to respect your freedom of speech. The states have to respect your uh, freedom from unreasonable search and seizure. Uh, when the courts have said that the states have to respect most, but not all, that's a process known as selective incorporation. Uh, and that's something that will come up for more discussion later, uh, especially uh, when discussing the 14th Amendment to the Constitution. But for right now, uh, in this video, we're going to focus on the First and Second Amendments, parts of the Bill of Rights. The First Amendment actually contains five different rights and five different civil liberties. We're going to start by talking about the freedom of religion. Now the freedom of religion or religious freedom has two parts and they're both important. The first part is called the Establishment Clause. The Establishment Clause says that Congress or the federal government cannot create an official American religion. They cannot promote one religion over another. So whenever you see a rule about not being able to have certain kinds of religious ceremonies or religious references in a public school or a public courthouse, that's because of the Establishment Clause. The government is not allowed to promote Christianity over Judaism or Judaism over Islam or Islam over Hinduism or Hinduism over Christianity. The government can't do any of that. That's the Establishment Clause. Congress will not establish an American religion. The other part of freedom of religion is that the government can't stop you from following a particular religion if you believe in it. 
So if you follow Islam or if you follow Judaism or Hinduism or Buddhism or Zoroastrianism or any other religion, the government can't stop you from following that. Uh, they can't pass a law saying that you can never take a Sabbath day off or uh, things like that. Uh, so religious freedom has two parts to it. Government can't create a religion, and the government can't stop you from exercising religion. Establishment clause, government can't set up a religion. The free exercise clause is the government can't stop you from following a certain religion. Uh, the uh, next, or one of the next parts of the uh, the First Amendment's freedoms is the freedom of expression, which would be the freedom of the press and the freedom of speech. Um, now, these things are not absolute. One of the long-standing references is that you cannot go into a crowded theater and yell falsely. You can't lie that there's a fire and try and get everybody to panic and stampede. And you can't you know, after there's a stampede and people get hurt and they try and blame you, you can't say, well, it was free speech. No, you can't, you can't say things that you know are likely to cause a lot of damage and pain. Um, so, again, there are exceptions to these things, but for the most part, the government is not supposed to stop you or punish you uh, for what you say. Uh, if they try and stop you ahead of time, they know that you're going to give a speech or they know you're going to publish an article and they try and stop you, that's called prior restraint. You can't do that. Um, also, you can't punish someone after the fact because they did publish an article. Uh, now, again, there are exceptions. Uh, as students, you know that there are a number of exceptions because when you're in the school environment, there are things that you are not allowed to say, not allowed to do, uh, because there are certain rules that are set in order to establish the learning environment. And the courts have said that even though public schools are a public space, it's okay to have those restrictions if they're necessary for the schools to do their job. Um, there are also cases where for national security, the government can say, look, this is classified, don't print it. Uh, and they can try and stop people from leaking or spreading that information. Uh, some other exceptions are uh, if you're going out of your way to provoke people and get them to do something that they should know is wrong and you know is wrong, uh, that's bad. Okay. Um, one of the examples that I use is it's one thing to say that you're really mad at teachers and you hope that all teachers have a really bad day. That could kind of be free speech. But if you get a group of people together and get them all together in front of a teacher's house and say, boy, you know, I really don't like teachers. It would really be appropriate if teachers were to find all of their windows are suddenly broken and the people that are listening to you pick up a bunch of rocks and throw them through the teacher's window, well, you could be, you, you can't just say, oh, free speech, I just said it. No. All right, you can get held accountable for what you provoked. Um, there's also obscenity. Um, obscenity is a very hard thing to define, uh, and the courts have tried to do it, but there's no formula for it. But something is obscene if it's, uh, has some sort of usually sexual content that's considered so over the top and it doesn't have any kind of artistic value. Uh, it's just there to get a, uh, a rise or get a response out of somebody. Uh, that can be considered obscene material and the government can have some restrictions on that. Um, and then another exception would be the cases of libel and slander which are when you deliberately say something that you know is false uh, to try and make somebody else look bad. Uh, you can't lie about someone to hurt their reputation and then claim free speech protection. That's against the law. You can get sued for it in certain circumstances. Um, so those are 
again, some of the restrictions and limits that are put on uh, the free speech or the free press. Um, finally, with uh, the First Amendment, we have freedom of assembly and freedom of association. Uh, the government can't stop you from joining a club or joining an organization. Uh, and they can't prevent that club or organization from getting together uh, in a public space. So you're allowed to have your group, your club, and you're allowed to go meet in the park. Okay, uh, The government can't stop you. Uh, now, the government can require things like permits if your meeting is going to be so large that it might cause traffic problems or whatnot. So there are some restrictions in the name of public safety, but we can't ban you and prevent you altogether. Um, so that's the First Amendment. Um, finally, in this video, I want to talk a little bit about the Second Amendment. Um, the text of the uh, Second Amendment says that a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That text has caused a lot of arguments um, because it doesn't just extend to the militia, which is today what we call the National Guard, citizen soldiers. Uh, it also uh, applies to individuals. Individuals have the right to keep and bear arms, which means that a lot of times when the government has tried to pass gun control measures, um, those gun control measures have run afoul of the uh, of the Second Amendment uh, because you the government is not supposed to be able to stop the people from uh, from owning and using weapons uh, within legal realms. Uh, and then the question is, what is legal? What are the restrictions that we can put on who can own a gun, when they can carry it, when it can be out in the open, things like that. These are issues and arguments that we continue to have in American society, you know, right up until today. So that concludes part one uh, of this uh, series on chapter four. Um, covers a lot of ground and there's a lot of room for discussion. So uh, rather than just one set of discussion questions to leave you with, uh, I actually, there are several. Uh, so I will leave you with them and see you in the second video.